Okay, so with the uh, franchise now, it's already, you know, well established and stuff. How exactly do you go about expanding the franchise, especially going into sci-fi for the first time? So yeah, good question. I, I think the the thing with Sean is that you know we love telling lots of different stories with him. You know we're we're always looking for different stories and different ideas to try out. And the first film was really about trying to work out whether we could tell a film with no dialogue. You know, can you keep a story going for 70, 80 minutes yeah. and keep people interested? And we think we did that. And so this time it was all right. What what genre? What kind of area can we get into that we've never you know tried at Arden before? Mm -hmm and sci-fi just felt like it was going to be the right thing and it felt like a great world to get Sean into. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's actually looks a lot of fun as well. I mean, was it just your decision or is it a collaborative team decision? Who came up with that idea first? Well, it's, uh, I was working with Richard Starzak, who's the creator of the series, and a kind of team of us. So actually, Mark Burton, who was involved in the first film, was our director of the first film with Richard and a kind of team of us, including Nick Park and Peter Lord, you know, um, and the rest of the studio, we, we very early on we said, let's do sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And we kind of all agreed that felt good, but then the process becomes, all right, but what does that mean? You know, kind of how do you tell a story about aliens with Sean and what kind of story is it? So we spent a lot of time trying to figure that out. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and obviously you introduced Lula, who's a quite adorable little alien. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's obviously a, a reason for her name. Do you want to explain? Well, it, well, there's kind of two reasons, actually, that we keep telling. I don't know whether you've been told this, but, um, you know, the, the, the main inspiration was the lunar lander. And, you know, it's, it, we're coming up to the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong landing on the moon, one of the, you know, ultimate moments in space exploration. Yeah. And so it was inspired by that, but also one of the directors, uh, I think his sister used to call him Lula as well for some reason. So, um, you know, it's kind of, it's twofold, but really it's the Lunar Lander that's the inspiration. Yeah. And uh, this time around, obviously, uh, Sean is, is still a mischievous, but he has to, um, he reins that in a little bit to keep an eye on her as well. Well, we start, yeah, when the film starts, he's, he's the same old Sean. And I think the big thing we all, I think we all love Sean because he is mischievous, yeah. you know. But the, the, the thing about Sean, I think the re re reason we do like him is because he's the kind of person who knows when he's gone too far, you know, and he, and he tries to correct that. But at the start of this film, he's arguing with his brother, Bitzer. And Bitzer is kind of telling him and the flock that they can't do things. And so Sean is kind of fed up with this. And so the whole adventure, is about Sean learning what it's like to be Bitzer. And, you know, Lula is this kind of sprite who turns up and she's like an extreme version of Sean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because she's obviously a young alien as well. Is there any anyone that she may be um, inspired by or like based on anybody's kids? Um, <laughs> I think had too much sugar. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, we, I think we've all been inspired by, uh, you know, children and, uh, you know, the, the people around us. In fact, actually, all the characters get inspired by the people around us. It's just, you know, natural. I've got a seven year old boy who's a bit, you know, he's a bit of a live wire. Um, and so there's bits of him in Lula and there are bits of, you know, lots of other, I think, kids and adults as well, to be honest, because it's, you know, the idea is that she's this kind of, you know, she's an alien in a new world. You know, she's a, this fantastic new character, you know, that's experiencing Sean's world. Yeah, and obviously Dad, she has a, a sweet tooth, like I said, and um, there's a clip where she runs amok in a supermarket, shall yeah. we say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how long, I mean, it's, stop motion is quite a painstakingly yeah. long yeah, yeah, process yeah. anyway. How long would that scene alone take to film? Well, I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly how long that's the scene took because it, it kind of varies um, in terms of how long shots take. But we ask our animators to do about 1.8 seconds a day. That's what they should average. Um, so if you look at that sequence, it's probably three minutes long. So you can work out, you know, there's a, more than a year's work in there just for the animators. Yeah. And of course, you've got to build everything as well. So the puppets have got to be designed, all the, you know, all the sets and so on. So, yeah, it's an awful long time and painstaking <laughs> process. It is. Uh, I mean, you've, you've worked uh, for Aardman for quite a few years now. Yeah. Um, going back to after Christmas, I think, 2011? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I joined Aardman yeah. in 2009. It's 10 years, yeah. actually, just, just gone 10 years. And I joined just as the company was making Arthur Christmas and the Pirates, yeah. an adventure with scientists. So it was an exciting time 
to kind of join because I moved from Los Angeles to to here and we were making two feature films and I I wasn't directly involved in those I was involved in various kind of story meetings and I you know I get involved in kind of looking at reels and so on yeah. but actually a lot of it was you know for me it was about developing new ideas and kind of you know being a few steps ahead of what was being made at that time yeah um, I mean, with because you've been here for so long would you find that I mean this has been a, an easier process or has it been quite hard with you know advances over the years it's it, it just changes to be honest making a film is always hard and actually I'm I'm a relatively new person at Ardman when you look at and you meet the people that are here people have been here for 20 years plus you know they've been here for a long time um, but I think making a film is always hard yeah. it's fun but it's hard work, you know, and, and every film I've ever been involved with has different challenges and this one had lots of challenges and I think we, because we were making the film so big, as you can see here, you know, we made things hard for ourselves, but that's what the team here are brilliant at, is that you give them a challenge and they rise to it and I think the film, you know, is clearly kind of shows that yeah. when you see it. Okay. And with your vision, where would you like to take Sean next? Where would you like to see him go? Oh, I've got lots of ideas, but I'm not allowed <laughs> to say them out loud. Uh, yeah, so if, any, if you've got any ideas, maybe you can tell me. I, uh, I did mention about uh, maybe superhero, Sean. Superhero, yeah. yeah. Well, it yeah. seems to be all the thing, isn't it, these well, exactly. days? So yeah, 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 maybe. Watch this space. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I like the look on that face. Can I read it? No. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time today. It's a pleasure. Cheers, thank you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey you guys! Hey you guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you guys!